Hey guys, Jim here. Time to do another new acquisition video. I know, I know, you guys are getting so used to seeing Guest Blade episodes that you forget that I buy my own damn knives. Well, here we go. This is something I've been actually waiting for quite a long time to get my hands on. Uh, this is an Olamic Cutlery, or in the folders they're calling themselves Olamic Tactical, and this is the Wayfarer model, their flipper. And uh, I've been waiting for about, I guess it's been what, almost, it was back in June when I got on their list to get one. And it's kind of one of those first come, first serve things. They've been doing a lot of crazy different designs and different handle materials and whatnot. Uh, so it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of awesome, as a matter of fact. And uh, Eugene and I, the uh, co-founder of Olamic, uh, he and I, for whatever reason, we just kind of hit it off on a personal level. We chat all the time, sometimes daily. And this is all without having physically purchased any of his products yet. And that's what one of the things that I love is buying from somebody that I respect, buying from somebody that I like and somebody that shows me respect you know, it's one thing to buy a really great knife from somebody whom you don't know or, you know, may have a reputation for being kind of a dick. And I don't have to mention any names. There's a few out there that are, you know, well publicized. Some even have a gold tooth. Anyway, uh, it's I prefer to give my money to somebody that I actually like. Now, listen, I'm not into the whole knife thing and buying knives just because, you know, I, I like a particular person, but it really does go a long way with me and how often you're going to see me as a repeat customer. So Eugene's got me for life. He has been just one of the most super nice guys, and it's been a pleasure waiting and waiting and waiting and finally getting one. Anyway, uh, Eugene posted on Instagram last week that he had a few different folders available and people were snatching them up left and right. And only people that were on the list were able to request one of the folders that he was listing or it was something like that. Anyway, I shot him a message and it turned out I was the only person that wanted this one. Everybody wanted the carbon fibers and everything else. And I like this because it was different. I also liked it for the blade and you're going to see that in a few moments here. This is, uh, I have no silver twill in my entire collection at this point. So this is, uh, this is pretty darn cool. It's something, you know, I try to get something different as often as I can and you can't always do that you know a lot of companies are putting out a lot of the same stuff and this is actually called Texalium which really is just silver twill uh, so you're getting that carbon fiber look in uh, in silver instead of in black or in a dyed carbon fiber so let's get to the specifications first this is a big knife it's a lot bigger than pictures would lead you to believe what you've got here is a 4-inch S35VN blade. I'm going to whip that out here in a minute because, you know what, let's not even just, I just want to get right to it. Let's not wait. Are you ready for this? Oh, looky, looky. Now that is a nice looking blade. Isn't that gorgeous? Hello. Mm hmm This was the real reason I wanted this particular knife. I almost didn't care what the scales were. To get that blade, I had to have this. So what you're looking at here is a 4-inch S35VN blade with a diamond belt high polish finish. That's going to be a little bit different than a true mirror. On a true mirror, it is exactly as the name would dictate, a true mirror. But when you look at this, you will actually be able to see some very fine grind lines. Now, you have to realize that you're not going to get a true full-on 100% mirror in this price range. Getting a full mirror is like, you know, buying a $1,500, $1,600, $2,000 uh, Tony Marfion Custom. You know, when he goes from a standard blade to a satin, it jumps up to about, you know, $1,100 from the black DLC to satin. Then when you go to the mirror polish, now you're jumping up another three, four $400 because it takes a tremendous amount of work and a lot of time. And really, when you're buying into custom knives, you're paying more for time than you are for materials. So, yeah, that's the blade, and that's why I kind of had to have it. 
they're offering it in three ways. Uh, this way, which is that uh, diamond belt high polish. They're doing a matte blasted finish. And of course, a uh, satin blade, which is a, uh, I think he said it was a 400 grit satin, which is uh, certainly very, very nice. This thing is a beast. It's a monster in the hand. So you've got all titanium construction. Your backspacer is titanium. Your uh, frame is titanium. Obviously, the liner lock, all that is titanium. The pocket clip is stainless steel. And we'll talk about the design of this and what they did with it and why it's designed the way it is a little bit later on. Then you've got uh, the Texalium or Silver Twill scales over the top of that. And again, guys, they work with everything. I've seen crazy stuff come out of Olamic. Overall, the first impressions are, wow, when I pulled it out of the pouch, wow. This is a big, thick, heavy, four-inch blade, and yet it flies out incredibly easy. There's the uh, blade marking right there, S35VN. You know, it's not R.J. Martin, but again, as I was discussing with Eugene, R.J. Martin is using only a slightly smaller blade, but it's a lot thinner, and then he takes in such a deep hollow grind that there's not a lot of weight to that blade. You're having to bring out tremendous amount of weight here, and it flies open. I can open it both ways. I can rock back on it, or I can push button it. Which on this one, I kind of tend to prefer kind of a hybrid in between. I'm still pulling back, but I'm kind of preloading it a little bit. And it just flies open. And it makes a great sound, too. A nice, solid ka -chunk. Love this custom pivot, by the way. You guys know I'm big on the little details. And if you're buying into custom knives, this is the kind of thing you should expect. Not a, uh, an off-the-shelf standard piece of hardware. They are numbered on the inside of the backspacer. From what I recall, uh, Eugene said they actually started with, and I'm having, actually having to look it up, W101. So this is uh, 42 into their production. Very slick, very cool knife. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Olamic, and then we'll keep playing with the knife here in a moment. Um, Olamic, the, 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 the derivation for the word, uh, as Eugene explains, it was... Uh, I guess it was an old Hebrew word, and it means uh, something that lasts through eternity. And I think that's also signified in the uh, infinite symbol they have there in their logo. Because they really try to build things that last. Their origins really start with fixed blade knives. They started doing amazing custom uh, fixed blade knives. They went from Damascus fixed blades to these really, really big folders. And they do everything from your standard taken out to go camping and beat the crap out of knives up to full presentation grade collector's knives that are, you know, $10,000 and up. They really do everything. And their Damascus work is very, very impressive. If, if you're interested in the art of making knives, not just making a tactical folder, but the actual artistry that goes into knives. You owe it to yourself to go to Olamic's website and also go over to uh, Instagram and check out their posts. It's at Olamic, at um, O-L-A-M-I-C. And go see the amazing work that they have posted. Now, there's a whole team of people there at Olamic that do things, and a lot of us, myself included for the longest time, just assumed it was Eugene and his partner, but it's not. There, apparently, there's a team of people that do the work to, to create these amazing knives. So I don't want anybody to feel left out at Olamic if I say Eugene so much. It's just that's the that's kind of the face of the brand that we're familiar with. That's the person that we interact with the most. So I certainly don't mean to slight anybody at all. Now, this particular model came to be through a unique collaboration with Michael Venino. Michael actually designed this entire knife, everything about it. It wasn't just like they took a rough sketch of his and then kind of made it their own. He literally designed everything. He engineered the entire knife, all the littlest details, and 
created something that's actually quite magical. When you feel this thing open, you know you've got a solid flipper. Now, I do know that the original series of knives that came out, uh, there were about eight of them. And it was the very first time they attempted to make these, and the detents were very weak, and there was... Eugene himself was not 100% happy with the lockups. So when he sold them uh, at a show, he actually told the buyers, hey, listen, if there's anything that you don't like about the lockup or the detent, just let me know. I'm more than happy to, to tune it up for you and, and make it your way. And uh, one of our, our, our buddies here, uh, J Diesel Joe 69 you know him from a few of the Guest Blade series that I've done. Uh, he actually owns one of the originals himself, and he was perfectly happy with the way that came out. This is a marked improvement. There is a great feeling when you open this. It's, a, it's almost like opening a bodega for those that have handled a, a Todd Begg bodega. There's a, a great deal of similarity there. Now, when you want to start classifying what kind of knife this is, you know, you want to talk, is this mid-tech, is it custom, or is it a production knife? Uh, that was one of the first questions that I posed to Eugene after getting this in my hands. And he says, well, it's, it's definitely not a production knife. These are, he goes, in my opinion, it's a step above mid-tech. He goes, the only things that we don't do, he goes, uh, we send out for the, the liners and the backspacer. And then obviously the initial rough cut of the blade. He says, but everything is then done by us and by hand. They profile this blade. They do all the work on the blade. They contour the frames. They do all of the scale work. Everything is done by hand in their shop, proprietary to their shop. He says, so we're actually going to be calling these, um, what did he say? Custom tech. They're going to assign their own name because, because it's really more than mid-tech, but not quite what you would call a custom. He says there's a, a tremendous amount of hand labor that goes into the making of every single one of these knives. And I can see it and I can feel it when you look at the details of this knife and the beauty that it exudes, the way that it feels in the hand. Everything is fitted perfectly. There is not a seam or section that's out of place. The jimping on here is wonderful. It doesn't look like there's a lot, but there's a, a wonderful amount of traction there. You can actually see it pulling my skin back from my thumbnail. It's got a great amount of traction, but it's not digging in and, you know, causing any kind of, uh, I don't know, pain or discomfort or anything. It's just perfectly done. The flipper tab is a great size. Uh, it's angled in nicely to the the notch out for the fingers. It's very easy to access and thank goodness one of the very few makers who's making a rounded off flipper. I am so tired. Look at my finger. This is this is from me flipping my knives all day every day and I actually have a hard callus under here as well. Some of them just aren't contoured to be comfortable and if you're like me and you really have a serious appreciation for flippers you're always flipping your knives. Always, always, always flipping your knives. I would put this up there. Let me wheel my knives over here into place. You guys know that I raved for the longest time about my Browse Division flipper. Still to this day, one of the absolute smoothest flippers and nicest actions I've ever had. I put the Wayfarer right up there with it. This thing just flies open. It's nice and smooth. And remember, this is not broken in yet. This is fresh off the bench, and I just got it in my hands a couple hours ago and haven't even really played with it all that much because being a mirrored blade, I didn't want to go messing with it too much before I got it under my camera. So, yeah, I'm mighty happy. It is a fantastic knife. It feels just right in the hand. Some people might feel it's going to be too big, and I have a sneaking suspicion that there's going to be a slightly smaller model coming out sometime in the future. I would expect to see a three and a half inch version coming out. Now, again, that's, you know, not verified. It's not 100 percent, but it is something I talked to with uh, Eugene about just to kind of, you know, get a feel for what else they've got going on. Uh, each knife is going to come in a nice custom pouch. Uh, mine was not a Bill's case, but I know they do also ship in Bill's cases. I can't find, oh, this was the, 
the case I got here. I forget who makes these. Oh, it's the Ace. So I got a nice Ace case with mine. Nice presentation. There is the card that comes with it. So you get a birth certificate. And you're going to want to hold on to this uh, for your, any warranty work. You have a transferable lifetime warranty as long as you have this card with this stamp on it. That's all you need. But it tells you all you need to know. It's the Wayfarer. There's your individual numbering. 4-inch S35VN. Uh, Texalium uh, for the scales. The clip is stainless. The liner's titanium. And that is when it was born. Yep, she's a fresh one. Today is the 16th. And she was completed on the 13th. So very, very... Oh, Friday the 13th. How cool. That's my, I told you, that's my good luck day. I mentioned that before. That's my good luck day, and I suppose it was. Now, let's talk about some of the interesting little design pieces here. When we talk about the clip. You guys know I will nail a custom maker for a cheap clip, and I was worried about this because it is just a standard stamped steel spring clip. However, they did put a lot of thought into how they made it. Number one, it's got a nice ramp up here to, to enter your pocket very, very easily without being... See? It's not digging in. It's not an FU clip. Take note, Tony. Then, you'll notice here, you've got an area to grab. It's not a super deep carry pocket clip. I've gotten to the point now I will not buy a knife if it's a deep carry pocket clip. I don't want to fumble around and try to get my knife out. I want to get it out in one fell swoop, whip it out, and I'm done. Period. Simple. End of story. And then this right here, and I was kind of wondering about this, and Eugene did bring it up. He says what they've done is they put these two notches in there so that when you go to grab the knife, no matter what finger is grabbing it, even if you're just kind of doing a little pinch here and pulling it out because you're not in a hurry, you're just kind of pulling it out of your pocket, the fatty part of your finger drops in, and it snags. So you've actually got a traction point here. Now that may just seem like you know something really, really simple to engineer, but it was brilliant to think of it and to put it on the knife. You have an oversized lanyard hole that goes all the way through. Um, realistically, you could probably put four lanyards through there and have a whole little tassel fest going on. I don't know if it really needs to be quite that huge, but it's certainly not going to be difficult to use. You don't have to use a, a, a thread or fishing uh, line or anything to start pulling your lanyard through. It's going to take 550 paracord, no problem at all. The fitment of everything on here is near to flawless. I haven't found a flaw in it yet. Everything seems to be contoured wonderfully. There is some jeweling within the uh, liners, inside of the liners. I had not noticed that until right now, actually. Very nicely done. There is the lockup, pretty early lockup, no stick at all. Blade centering is not collector centered. Just a, it leans a little bit toward the lock side, just a little bit, but there's obviously no rubbing, or you would see that somewhere in the blade, so it's not rubbing at all. I'm not going to call that uh, any cause for concern. Now, here's what I was mentioning before, price range. You know, a knife like this would cost from pretty much anybody in a mid-tech or custom, you'd probably be in the seven to $900 range. This... With that diamond belt high polish blade, five seventy five, and I do believe they start at five twenty five. If you do something a bit more basic, maybe less expensive scale like G ten, or you go into maybe the matte blasted finish on the uh, on the blade, five seventy five is what this one was. That is wonderfully reasonable in this day and age. So I will say this, if you've ever come across any of the Olamics, I know Fort Henry Custom Knives has had a couple of these uh, when they first came out a few months ago. I know because I was trying to buy one on Folder Friday and missed it. And that was my first opportunity with them. You've seen them on Instagram. You've seen them talked about on the forums, but you just were unsure. Guys, this thing is gorgeous. It's well made. It's well balanced. It feels good in the hand. It flips solid and fast. The lockup is fantastic. 
the attention to detail is there. Certainly what you would expect to have uh, gotten in a much more expensive knife. I would contact them because I believe they are there's either six months or a year out uh, as far as how busy they are with, uh, with their orders. So if you want to get one, you're not going to be able to order one and get it right away. So you might want to get on the list as early as you can so that you're not left out in the cold. I am most certainly going to be buying another, and absolutely when they make or if they make a smaller version of this, I will be buying that. Uh, they do make a non-flipper. I think it's called, the, it's either the Bravada or Bravado, but uh, Bravado is, I believe, the name of it. Non-flipper, standard thumb stud opening for those of you guys that just don't like flippers, and there are certainly plenty of you out there. You've got a lot of options, and they're going to continue opening up more options. You want G10, you want carbon fiber, you want Timascus, you want whatever you want. I don't believe that there's a limit. I have seen them do some crazy shit. Contact Eugene. Even if you're not ready to buy just yet, just contact him and talk to the guy, and I think you'll fall in love with his philosophies and the way he looks at the business. And I think it's going to impress you enough that you're going to want to get on the list just based off of that. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down there below in the comments. Otherwise, uh, do directly contact Eugene. He's just a super nice guy. He loves to talk to people. And get on their list. Oh, my goodness. I'm so very glad that I got this. I thought I had to wait another three or four months. I'm glad this opportunity came up. I apologize, Jerry. I beat out my buddy Jerry by like seconds because he's also on the list and he saw this pop up and he wanted to buy it. So uh, who knows? After I get my third or fourth Olamic, Jerry, maybe I'll send it out to you, buddy. All right, guys, that's all I've got to say about that. I'm going to go. and I've got a lot more videos to work on. I'll see you guys soon.